Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you an example radical mechanism, uh, and I'm going to use the radical chlorination of methane. Uh, and this mechanism features, uh, I'll show all three uh, types of steps, initiation, propagation, and termination. Um, and this mechanism features homolytic cleavage and abstraction as the primary kinds of steps. Before I do that, uh, let me show you the, the reaction itself. Uh, Show, show carbon label. This is a reaction between methane and chlorine, and it produces uh, chloromethane uh, and hydrogen chloride. I want to make this reaction here look a little prettier. There we go. I'm going to go one step uh, and put in the hydrogen so it's kind of clear what all's going on. First, we're going to talk about the initiation step. Commonly, when we're doing initiation steps, or commonly when you're drawing radical mechanisms, it's it, you want to you want to draw or show the initiation step. And the initiation step in this case is homolytic cleavage of the chlorine-chlorine bond. So let, me, let me actually add that here. Okay. Our initiation step is homolytic cleavage. Uh, and as a reminder, the homolytic cleavage step requires some energy input, so either either light or heat uh, as a way to get this thing going. Uh, but as far as drawing the mechanism, I'm not going to uh, worry too much about which one of those it is. So homolytic cleavage involves breaking the carbon chlorine, uh, or remember, sorry, breaking the chlorine chlorine bond up into two chlorine radicals. This look just a little bit prettier. Now let's go grab our radical arrows and away we go. Um, in a homolytic cleavage step, we're looking at, oh, I don't like the way that looks. We're looking at breaking the chlorine chlorine bond. <clears throat> One electron goes with each chlorine atom, two chlorine radicals. Next are the propagation steps. Uh, if you remember the very first video in this sequence, I said that the propagation steps are where all of the main action takes place. This is where most of your bond forming and bond breaking uh, as far as the balanced chemical equation goes. And, um, whoops. Methyl group, chlorine radical. So the first step, we have chlorine radicals left after initiation. So we need to use chlorine radical on our first, uh, on our first propagation step. So what we have is chlorine radical, we have methane, uh, and if we look at our products, we need to form a carb or chlorine hydrogen bond. Well, that's going to happen in this step. And we're going to be left over with the methyl radical. Okay. And if you remember, uh, propagation steps tend to e, or I'm sorry, tend to have no net change in the number of carbon atoms, or sorry, the number of radicals that uh, exist in the uh, in the reaction at that time. And I just want to now separately, because I want to have the nice pretty equation, but I also want to show you the mechanism arrows. So I'm going to draw everything a second time. Chlorine radical abstracting a hydrogen from methane. So 
this is a hydrogen abstraction. And that yields hydrogen chloride and methyl radical. Now, in our second step, I'm going to have that methyl radical. I want it to be a different, I don't want, I don't want gallium. There we go. Carbon label. I have that methyl radical and it needs to have a chlorine attached to it. So it's going to bump into a chlorine at, or sorry, a chlorine molecule and abstract a chlorine from the chlorine molecule. So we're going to have chlorine and methyl, and we're going to be left over with a chlorine radical. Just make this a little bit prettier. Okay. So now, uh, again, methyl radical abstracting a chlorine from a chlorine molecule, making chloromethane, and regenerating a chlorine radical. Well, this chlorine radical is going to go back into the first propagation step. There. And this first propagation step generates a methyl radical, which we need in the second propagation step. This is actually an important uh, feature of most radical mechanisms that in the propagation steps, the first propagation step makes something that's used in the next propagation step and so on until you get to the last propagation step, which makes something that's needed in the first propagation step. And then just briefly, uh, let's take a look at what the mechanism arrows here look like. Let me go get my radical arrow back. Right. So now we have uh, this halogen abstraction by the methyl radical. Chlorine chlorine bond breaks, yielding a chlorine radical on chloromethane. halogen abstraction. Now, what happens, you know, if you take a look at the propagation steps, all of the important bond forming and bond breaking is going on here. The carbon hydrogen bond and methane is breaking, the hydrogen chlorine bond is forming, the chlorine chlorine bond is breaking, the chlorine carbon bond is forming. In an ideal world, the initiation step only needs to happen once because this supplies an initial set of chlorine radicals that can churn through the propagation until something runs out. In practice, the initiation happens a lot of times uh, because there's some termination going on. Uh, and most of the termination steps that are going to happen here are of the coupling recombination variety. Uh, and these uh, will tend to be, most of them, not very productive. There is one coupling step that is productive, and that is the coupling of chlorine radical and methyl radical to form the intended product, chloromethane. But other kinds of couplings are also possible, uh, including the coupling of two chlorine radicals to regenerate a molecule of chlorine. This outcome is not necessarily so terrible because as long as you're still providing whatever energy input is used to, to undergo homolytic cleavage, or, or even just there's still methyl radicals around, chlorine can continue to react. Uh, a little bit less helpful is if two carbon radi or two methyl radicals bump into each other. This is going to lead to the formation of a molecule of ethane, which is not 
what you want. So just as, as an example of the types of outcomes that can happen, your termination could yield your desired product, one of your reactants, or a byproduct. And byproducts are things you probably want to avoid. And so if possible, you want to set up your reaction to avoid termination events. Uh, though this is going to happen as you run out of radicals. In the next video, I'll do an example using uh, the radical addition of HBr to an alkyne, or I'm sorry, to an alkene. Uh, thanks for watching.